Ramjet Troubleshooting Tutorial. I have a user question today that I want to cover, and this is from a subscriber who created a pretty robust form, but ran into one little problem. And let me just demonstrate the problem here. In this form you see five text fields that have what the subscriber calls shadow text, a term I had not really been familiar with before, but it's basically a pre-entered text that when you click on the form disappears and allows you to type. And if you type something it doesn't come back. But if you have nothing in the field it comes back. And the user did this by using a real interesting script that took the tool text data and put it into the field at, on initialize. And so if you look here he has on the accessibility tab a tool tip entered which is just basically a little a little help, a little extra help that when you roll over a certain object it will pop up in a little yellow window like that. And the script he has is allowing that tooltip to get put in as shadow text when the form is initialized. Okay, but here's his problem. He wanted to make the object, the, the text field where this shadow text lives, he wanted to make that rich text. And you do that by highlighting the object and changing it to rich text like so. And rich text, for those of you who don't know, is just um, underline, italics, bold. It's text that is allowed to be marked up, kind of like HTML. Um, the default setting in Lifecycle for a text field is just plain text, meaning it's just going to be uh, a font and a size and a weight, and it's not going to be able to be changed. But rich text allows you to type and use hotkeys such as control B to make things bold or control U to underline or control I to do italics and then you can do all those things again to turn those things off so rich text is a great feature and Livecycle supports it but the problem that this subscriber ran into is when he changed the, the, the text field rich text his tooltip shadow text no longer worked and so he was wondering why that happened and that's why he emailed me and so I took a long time looking at it and finally figured out a solution for him but it just shows an interesting method for creating shadow text and I wanted to show everybody that and explain how it was done so if you see in this field we'll turn it back to plain text you see in this field it is a regular text field with the accessibility tooltip entered and if we look a little bit under the hood we can see how all that works so here's the script there's an initialized script which happens basically when the form is first initialized everything in this section will execute and then he has an enter script and an exit script so that's when the user gives focus to that particular object this is the script that will run and exit likewise when they exit out of the item this script will run and then there's a mouse enter and a mouse exit and all those things do is when the mouse comes into the area like so it'll, ex it'll execute that one line of code and then when it removes itself from that object the, the mouse exit code will execute and he has what is typically used in those types of events just simple little color value changes so it's a swap. So in other words, when I preview, if I roll my mouse into the field, you see how it gets a little darker? That's the mouse enter, mouse exit script executing. And when I actually click on the field, that's not the mouse enter, that's the actual enter script. And then when I click away from the field, that's the exit script. So you have five scripts, initialize, enter, exit, mouse enter, and mouse exit. Okay, so let's explain what's going on here. Initialize is happening when we first hit Preview PDF and the form first loads into Acrobat. Two things happen. First, this dot execute event exit takes place. I'll explain that in a minute. And then line three here is this dot format dot picture dot value is set equal to this value null and then in parentheses an object value okay so this is a nice little piece of code I had never seen this done before and it works great 
except in rich text fields. This little piece of code right here, line 2, is only saying one thing. It's saying go down to the exit event right here and run whatever you find there. So basically this is just a way to run this little bit of code without having the exit event actually fire, meaning the person actually went into the field and exit. And so this is just a way to actually not have to write so much code twice. You could take this and copy and paste it right where this is at and the same effect would happen. Okay, so what's happening in the exit event then? There's an if statement. If, if what? If this is null, so that's a little that's a little operator, this meaning this object, this text field, if it's null, then I want to set the color of the font to that color, and I want to set the posture to italic. And that's all that that does. And then it jumps back up, because remember we started in initialize, and then it sets the value of the picture format to this little piece of code, null brace this.assist.tooltip.value, which is basically putting in the tooltip into a null function for a picture value. Very interesting. I never have I never had seen that before. And it worked great. Except when rich text is being used. Okay, and let's just cover the enter here real quick. Enter is just a, a color swap. It changes the font color back to back to black. And the font posture meaning no more italics is all it's doing. It's swapping that off. So pretty simple code. But it doesn't work if we change the objects field format to rich text. The only field working or not working is the one now the mouse enter and the mouse exit still work but that shadow text is gone. Now why is that? That was what I was tasked with figuring out why. Well if you notice here field 1 is using rich text and it works fine. Field 1 is the one that I actually did some modifications to and I want to explain those modifications. First, how did I figure out how to do it? Well, I didn't know initially how the shadow text was even working, so I had to investigate that first. Secondly, I had to figure out what's different about rich text fields and plain text fields. And so the best way to figure that out was to actually look under the hood, in a sense, and that's where XML source comes in. Now, some of you may not have XML source on your header like this. The way to get it is to come into this little gray area, right click, and just choose that as one of your options. XML source is basically a view of the PDF dynamic content. So all this content right here is really what encompasses the entire lifecycle document. It's pretty complicated stuff mostly, and I would recommend you don't mess around in here very much. But in these certain situations where you're trying to debug something, sometimes it's the only way to figure something out. So if you highlight a certain object and hit XML source, you're going to see the actual XML code for that object. And So I'm just going to highlight everything for that particular text field. Anywhere from the opening field tag, which is on line 424, to the closing field tag, which is on 478. So it's about 50 lines of code. All right, and what do we see here? We see uh, a user interface tag, a font, a margin, a border, some scripts. There's our scripts. An assist, that's the tooltip. An event, another event, a traversal, and that's it. Nothing. It's done. But what do we see if that's changed? How does that change when we change it to rich text? Because apparently changing that changes something here that causes the code not to work anymore. So what is it? Well, let's look again. Line 424, before it finished at line 478, but actually, see, we have one, two, three more lines of XML data. And the key is this right here, these, these extra three lines. When you turn rich text on, the value option is enabled, and it's given a text slash HTML content type. In other words, rich text fields are basically web pages inside of a text box. And so all the information you put in there is treated under the hood in Lifecycle as HTML information. 
And that would make sense because that's what HTML is. That's what web pages are. They're marked up text. It's not just plain text. If you go to any web page, like Google, you have text, but it's marked up. It's got hyperlinks. It's got some color changes. It's got all kinds of things. Maybe a button here and there. All, that's called marked up text. It's not just plain text. If we looked at this web page in plain text, you know, Google would be over here at the left side, and there'd be uh, a, a search button and all this kind of stuff over here, and it would be it would just just be hyperlinked text, kind of like a Web 1.0, something you saw back in 1994 if you were browsing the web back then. All right. So the script the subscriber wrote works great when rich text is not involved. It's actually using a picture value to get this tooltip put in there, but it doesn't work very well when rich text is selected. Now let's show you what I changed then to make it work. Here's the code for the one that does work right here, and you can see I added a couple lines of code. All right, what did I do? Well, I changed So I left this one line of code in here just to show you the difference in the two, but I commented it out using the double slash. All right, my code, all it does is put the tooltip value straight into the raw value, meaning it sets text fields text equal to whatever the tooltip is. And then before it was making the value of a picture, the background picture basically, of the text field into the tooltip's text. All right, so I do that instead of this. And then next, I have to make sure that I get rid of this, though, when the user enters. So I have to test, kind of like our exit used to be, a test for null. And if it was null, it put the tooltip in. Well, this tests to see if raw value equals the tooltip. And if it does, it changes the raw value to nothing so that the user can then type what they want. One more thing is in the check to see if it's null, meaning the user didn't type anything, or on that initial initialize event after it changes the text field to the right color and the right format italics then it needs to put in the tooltip value as the raw value so basically i'm not using the format.picture.value attribute i'm just i'm just leaving that aside because apparently that doesn't work with rich text and instead i'm using the raw value attribute which is not ideal again it basically means that the value of the field is going to be the value of the tooltip if nothing else is put there, which may cause problems when this form is submitted and maybe things aren't filled out correctly. But you could control that. Uh, you could control that programmatically using so the, the pre-submit would be the only way to do that. Anyway, that could be dealt with in other ways. So this obviously this is not a perfect world. This is a workaround, but it does give the user what he wants. So hopefully if you've, this problem didn't have any real meaning to you, hopefully seeing underneath the hood the XML source, some of the code and how it works, hopefully that might help you in your problem or your events that you're trying to script and give you some success programming things. Because these, these are very handy little attributes. These mouse enter, mouse exit features, uh, the shadow text, these are very handy and you could use these in any type of form to pre-populate the form with some information to help your end user. It's all about helping your end user use your form correctly. If, if there's a temptation or if there's a, uh, an intuitiveness that, that causes the user to do the wrong thing, then it really is upon you, the programmer, the form designer, to redesign. It's a, it's a bad design. Good design promotes uh, good usage of the form. If there's a potential for a problem, you need to do your best to remove that potential. And Don's doing that, the subscriber here is doing that by putting this tooltip text as shadow text to help his people out. So keep the questions coming. Thank you, Don, for your question. I uh, hope, this, hope this helps you understand what, what I did. And remember that IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. See you next time.